السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His household, his companions May Allah bless them all And may Allah bless every one of us Grant us goodness during these blessed days May Allah سبحانه وتعالى increase us in favor Amen My brothers and sisters we saw in the previous episodes the dua that we should be making for our parents, Rabbi Rahmahuma Kama Rabbayani Sagira, the dua that we should be making for the rest of the Muslims and for our hearts to be cleaned from any ill feeling against the rest of the Ummah. Rabbana Firlana, Wali Ikhwani Naladina Sabakuna Bil Iman, Wala Tajal fi Kulubina, Rilali Ladina Amanu Rabbana in Karaufur Rahim. What a powerful dua! Just to make mention quickly of the exact position of that dua in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has indeed blessed us. Surah Al Hashr, verse number 10. Surah Al-Hashr, verse number 10, we should go to that surah, we should look at it, we should memorize that verse, understand its meaning and use that to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in this episode, I'd like to go through the dua of the angels for us. Amazing. Did you know that the angels supplicate, they call out to Allah for us? And who is deserving of this dua? Who is deserving of the supplication of the angels? That is going to be of great importance. And Allah makes mention of it. In fact, the supplication itself has in it some unique wording. So in Surah Ghafir, in Surah Ghafir, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 7, الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا The angels that carry the arsh in a way that Allah knows best, those who are around the arsh, they declare the greatness of Allah, the majesty of Allah, the tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and declare His praise or the praise of their Rabb, and they believe in Him, and they seek forgiveness for those who have believed. Who is seeking forgiveness for you? The angels who are around the Arsh. Subhanallah. Alladheena yahmiluna al-Arsh, wa man hawlahu. Those who are around the Arsh, the angels. Imagine, they are, they believe in Allah, uh, they are praising the Allah, they are declaring the praise of Allah and they are calling out, they are making dua, they are actually seeking the forgiveness of Allah for those who believe. So Allah says, amanu. They are seeking the forgiveness for those who believe. So what are they doing? They are asking Allah, Oh Allah, forgive those who believe. That's what they are saying. And they keep on repeating the same dua. Amazing. Now Allah wants to describe for you and I to do us a beautiful favor by telling us what is that dua. We want to give you the details. Allah says, you want to know what the angels say for you, you who believe, you who utter the shahada. Do you want to know what the angels say for you? What the angels are asking for you? You know, before I even get to that, we show no concern sometimes for the rest of the ummah, for the rest of humanity. We show no concern. It's all about us. We're selfish. Oh Allah, forgive me. That's what we normally say. An important dua. But we saw previously how to make a dua for your parents. Oh Allah, forgive my parents. Forgive my family members. Forgive the ummah. Forgive those who came before me. Forgive those who had iman prior to me. Forgive those, all of those who have iman. Guide those who don't have iman towards iman. This is a concern for everyone. The angels have a concern for us. Mankind. So they are making dua for those who believe. What do they say? Allah says, they say, Rabbana wasi'ta kulla shay'ir rahmatan wa ilman faghfir lilladheena tabu wa attaba'u sabeelaka wa qihim adhab al jaheem. They say, O oh our Rabb, you have encompassed everything with your mercy and with your knowledge. 
your knowledge and your mercy encompasses absolutely everything. So therefore, forgive those who are seeking forgiveness. Forgive those who have repented. So when I say, oh Allah, forgive me, the angels say, oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, forgive me, the angels say, oh Allah, forgive him. Why? He's seeking forgiveness. فَغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا Oh Allah, forgive those who are repenting. But not just tabu. Tabu wa tabu sabilak. You know, uh, we say istighfar is to seek the forgiveness of Allah and tawbah is to return to Allah by changing your ways and habits. So many people engage in istighfar, but they don't engage in tawbah. They say, oh Allah, forgive me. But, you know, they haven't changed their whole life. They haven't come back to Allah, returned in a proper way. So tawbah is far more important. So the angels are saying, oh Allah, forgive those who have engaged in tawbah, those who've changed their lives, forgive them. Those who are asking for forgiveness, forgive them. And those who have followed your path, forgive them. وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكْ وَقِهِمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And oh Allah, save them. Save them from the punishment of hellfire. Save them from the punishment of hellfire. Why would these angels be making dua for Savior from the punishment of hellfire? For others. Because they know how dangerous, how painful, how hot, how harmful, how bad the fire of Jahannam or hellfire is. So they are saying, Oh Allah, forgive those who have repented and followed your path and save them from the punishment of hellfire. This is an amazing supplication by the angels. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it doesn't stop there. These angels, they don't get tired to call out to Allah. You know, if we were to call out to Allah, we would probably say, oh Allah, grant me this, grant me that, give me. And after a while, we would probably, you know, slow down. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. The angels are making dua, not for themselves, but for you and I. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they say, uh, forgive those who have repented and followed your path and save them from severe punishment then uh, the verses continue oh our Rabb grant them the paradise grant them entry into the paradise that you promised them Subhanallah, look at how beautiful the supplication is from this revelation of Allah. Allah is telling you the angels are saying, Oh Allah, forgive these people. Oh Allah, save them from hellfire. Not just save them from hellfire. If you were saved from hellfire, where would you go? You would go into heaven. It's a given, isn't it? But that's, it wasn't enough for them to say, Oh Allah, save them from hellfire. They are saying, Oh Allah, save them from hellfire and grant them entry into the paradise that you promised them. Subhanallah. رَبَّنَا وَأَدْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِينِ الَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ O Allah, grant them entry into that paradise that you have promised them. Subhanallah. But it's not good enough to be in paradise all alone. Imagine uh, you, are, you go out on a most beautiful holiday, lovely holiday, lovely place, and you're there all, all alone. There's no one besides you. Would you like it? Well, some might say, yes, I want to be all alone. But the majority of us, we wouldn't. We would want our family members with us. We would want our uh, children with us. We would want others with us, those who were close to us, our loved ones with us, wouldn't we? So the angels, when they said, oh Allah, and when they keep saying, even to this day, this dua is continuous. They keep on making this dua. Oh Allah, adkhilhum jannati adnin allati wa'attahum. وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ And O oh Allah, not just them alone, but let that Jannah be granted to the good from among their parents, their spouses and their children. Those who qualify, Ya Allah, let them all get Jannah to Firdaus. Grant, unite them. So if I'm in Jannah and say my spouse is in Jannah, my children are in Jannah, uh, what would happen? It would be best if we could be together somewhere. I know there are some spouses who might say, I don't want to be with my spouse, but obviously we're not going to get to that. Because when you go to Jannatul Firdaus, you're going to be having the most beautiful of spouses. They were your spouse in the dunya, but they're going to be upon the highest level, the most complete level of everything, whether it's beauty, you know, uh, understanding, goodness, kindness, everything to the highest level possible. 
So you won't be let down. You won't be let down. Let's not discuss that. Let's go to the dua here. So the angels are saying, Oh Allah, grant them entry into Jannah and grant, the, you know, grant them entry into Jannah together with the good from amongst their parents, from among their children, from amongst their spouses. MashaAllah, I would love to be reunited with my family. I would love it. MashaAllah, imagine going to Jannah and Allah says, Here's all your family. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are united with our family members. There is one beautiful word here that would uh, bring our attention or draw our attention to something interesting. Waman salaha. Those who qualify, those who are good enough to enter Jannah. Which means if you want to be united with your family members, you need to work with them. You need to work on them. You need to beautifully address the matter. You need to work towards Jannah and you need to tell them also to work towards Jannah. It's very important for us to work towards Jannah to Firdaus, not just on our own, but even with those whom we love so that we can enter Jannah. May Allah make it easy for every one of us. Uh, the end of that supplication and indeed that is the, the great the great victory what is the great victory when you are forgiven by Allah when you are saved from the fire when you are granted entry into paradise and united with your loved ones now that is the great victory that's why Allah says amazingly وَذَلِكَ huwa al fawzul azim and indeed, that is what you call al-fawz, true success. That is the great success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success. So I spent a moment showing you that the angels are calling out to Allah. The angels are asking for goodness for you and I, those who believe. And yet we sometimes don't even ask ourselves. Uh, we don't even ask for ourselves. Uh, we spend days and we haven't called out to Allah for our needs. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates needs within us so that we can turn to Him sometimes. Uh, let's call out to Allah every day. Brothers and sisters, you know, speaking about supplications from revelation, the idea is to instill in our hearts the love for supplication and dua. We need to learn these prayers. We need to learn how to call out to Allah. Use these beautiful words to call out to Allah. And we will definitely find great comfort and goodness uh, in this. Uh, it's amazing how, you know, I've looked at a lot of the du'as of the Qur'an. I'm still going to go into it, but in the next few episodes, I'd like to go into something unique. And that is the du'a of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because he was the best of creation. The most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, he was loved by Allah the most. He is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. The highest of all. He used to call out to Allah using such words that we would wonder. He did not really need all these things. Why did he use these words? Because if we were to follow his example, we would actually be using words that he used for needs that we have. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him,'s concern was always the Ummah, the Ummah, the Ummah. Even on the day of judgment, when everyone else will be saying nafsi, nafsi, everyone will be worried about himself, including the other prophets. They will all be worried about themselves and where they will fit in. On that day, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will be the only one who is going to say, Ummati, Ummati. Oh Allah, I'm concerned about my Ummah. I'm concerned about my followers. I'm concerned about my people, SubhanAllah. From the beginning, his concern was everyone else. He never gave preference to himself. He never filled the, his own pocket with wealth, etc. But he had the greatest, the most in terms of what Allah has bestowed upon him. So he called out to Allah using beautiful words. And I want to go through some of these. I'm going to start off with an amazing dua that is made mention of in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Remember, we're talking of supplications from revelation. I explained to you, revelation is divided into two. One is the Quran and two is the Sunnah, what we would call the Hadith, because we are taking out the words of supplication from the Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu These are words that he uttered. He said them. And as we, we will go through them, every time I will keep reminding yourselves and myself about how he did not need it, we need it. So 
Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say very often, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. This hadith is narrated in Sahih Muslim. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. Oh Allah, I seek from you guidance. He was the most guided. He was rightly guided, guiding everyone else. He's saying, oh Allah, I'm seeking guidance from you. It goes to show his concern is to teach us. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was one of those who heard these words. He narrated them to us. So we are using those words to seek guidance from Allah. The Prophet sallallahu was a beautiful example for all of us. If you follow him, you won't have to do anything more. If you say what he said in terms of supplication, you will cover your whole life. And I will prove it to you in the next few episodes. You will see it. Amazing. Look, O oh Allah, I seek guidance from you. I'm asking you for guidance. I'm asking you for taqwa. Taqwa is what? Piety, God consciousness. He was the most pious, the most God conscious. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Perfect, flawless. Subhanallah. And he's saying, O oh Allah, I ask you for guidance. I ask you for God consciousness. Look at the humbleness. Look at the humility. Look at the humility. He says, well, afafa. You know, afaf is savior, protection from sin, from immorality, from sin, from vice. Oh Allah, grant me protection from sin. Subhanallah. We would say chastity. It's included in this. Al-afaf, al-iffa. It's protection from committing anything that would Displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I'm asking you, you know, purity. Al-Afaf, Iffa, make me pure. So all these terms are included in the, uh, this lovely word or term, Afaf, Iffa, Wal-Afafa, Wal-Ghina. And I ask you independence. Make me independent. Ghina also means wealth, sustenance. So we're asking Allah for sustenance, for wealth, such that we are not dependent on anyone besides Allah. These are the four things mentioned in this hadith. We need every one of them desperately. After every salah, at any time you get, no fixed time, no fixed number, no fixed place, you repeat the words, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. Oh Allah, I seek from you guidance, God consciousness and piety, purity, chastity, savior from sin, as well as independence. And you see what Allah does for you. And let's mean it. Let's understand it. Let's say these words very, very often. And we will come to realize the greatness of this beautiful, beautiful Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What beautiful words. What divine inspiration. What revelation from Allah. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not utter utterances from his whims and fancies rather every utterance was revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was revealed that's a beautiful dua now I want to move on to another lovely dua that we also need to memorize from among the duas of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the hearts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns the hearts from left to right, from guidance to this way, that way, you know, misguidance, guidance. All of that is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to ask Allah for guidance always, just like we heard in the previous hadith, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda. Oh Allah, I'm asking you for guidance. Subhanallah. So, in this particular dua, which is, a lovely dua mentioned by Aisha radiallahu anha that the Prophet sallallahu used to say very often. Kana yukthiru. Yukthiru means he used to say it so much abundantly. He used to say this often when he was calling out to Allah. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O you... This is the name of Allah. It's the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muqallibu al-qulub. O you, O owner of the turning of the hearts. O you who turns the hearts. O you who has the control over the hearts and its turning or their turning. Muqallib al-qulub. Qulub, the hearts. And 
and qalaba would mean to turn. So, O oh you who turns the hearts, thabbit qalbi ala deenik, strengthen my heart upon your deen. Make my heart firm upon your deen, upon your way, your path, your religion that you have chosen for us, monotheism, worshipping you alone. Strengthen my heart on that. Now, the most strong was Muhammad sallallahu He was sent to us. He was sent to us to guide us. He's making this dua because all of us need it more than anyone else. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O you who turns the hearts, O you who is the owner of the hearts and it's turning or they're turning, strengthen my heart upon the deen. Make my heart firm, thabat, thabbit, to make my heart firm upon your deen. You and I know that there are rules, there are regulations, there is the deen. Many times shaitan comes to us and he tries to make us dilly-dally. He tries to make us forget, become weak, become lazy. He tries to make us sin. He tries to make us abstain from the uh, commands that we have to fulfill. And it becomes challenging the environment, our friends, our workplaces, our, our countries, our systems and so on. The Prophet wasallam here is teaching us something beautiful. Keep on asking Allah for strength. But together with asking Allah, do something about it. There's no point like the previous verses, the previous uh, dua that we actually learned. We're asking for guidance, we're asking for God consciousness, we're asking for protection and purity and chastity, etc. And we're asking for independence and wealth, but we're not working towards it. We're not trying. That is an insult to Allah. Allah gives you the capacity, He gives you the ability, He grants you everything, and He wants you to be able to use the faculties He's given you, the ability, the strength He's given you to achieve what you believe is best for you. So now that you're asking Allah for these things, it shows that you're hopefully believing that this is what you want so work towards it work towards the guidance work towards quitting sin work towards protecting yourself from that which will displease allah and in this particular case case work towards strengthening your heart and allah will do that for you so the point i'm raising is don't just make dua some people think oh i want to achieve this is there any dua i can read the answer might be, yes, you can. There are so many du'as you can read, but not just reading. Reading alone is not really going to help you if you haven't used what Allah has given you to solve the problem as well, together with it. Ultimately, it's Allah, Allah's power. But Allah gives you the power as well. It's the power of Allah. He gave you the ability to a certain extent. You want to go, for example, to the university. You don't just repeat a thousand times, oh Allah, take me to the university. You need to... Make the dua, yes, but work towards it, speak to this one, raise some money, raise your school fees, perhaps apply, uh, you will have to go, etc. And do so many things and Allah will give you the ability and the acceptance. Without that, you're not going to achieve anything, my beloved brothers and sisters. So this is an important lesson that we learned from today's episode, that we must uh, make an effort to achieve what we want as much as we're calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like when you seek the forgiveness of Allah, strengthen yourself to stay away from that sin. You don't just say, oh Allah, keep me away from the sin. And then you jump straight into it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. My brothers and sisters, inshallah, we will be going through more of these lovely supplications of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the next episode. And I'm looking forward to going through the beautiful wordings that is our master. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Until we meet again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.